Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. Last time, we looked at how to use simple logic to conclude that evidence is necessary for our survival, and that evidence is needed in order to tell the difference between something that's probably true and something that's likely to be false. This time, what types of evidence are there, and can we prove that they have value? First, I feel it's important to point out what information is required in order to conclude that these types of evidence are needed. You need to acknowledge the existence of knowledge, truth, and the difference between truth and falsehood, or else evidence pertains to nothing. You need to acknowledge that absolute certainty is not enough, or else evidence is not needed. In short, Everything we've talked about in the last few episodes must be fully accepted before evidence even becomes viable. With all of that established, there is a form of evidence that sticks out right away. Evidence based on existing data and conclusions, and the existence of this can be known to be reliable with 100% certainty because we've been using these methods even before acknowledging the existence of evidence or uncertain truth. These methods are two in number. Number one, deduction. Here we have the most basic form of evidence, taking two general statements and drawing a specific conclusion from them. For instance, a thing is always what it is. Truth is a thing, therefore truth is always truth. Number two, induction. This is another basic form of evidence, finding a specific piece of information and drawing a general conclusion from it. We've seen this too with 100% certainty, Based on the specific evidence of our ability to think about this topic, we can draw the general conclusion that thoughts exist. After all, if they didn't exist, we wouldn't be able to think about them. Deduction and induction are logical proofs, methods of showing something to be true through the mere use of logic independently of other evidence, and it's only once these two methods are established and accepted that other methods of evidence become consistent and available for rational use. To reach the next one, we'll need to use that second method, induction, to draw a simple conclusion. Our evidence is this. We've picked up two small rocks and added them to two other rocks. This has created four rocks. We can continue to repeat this experiment, and every time the result will be the same. Now, this indicates a conclusion to us. Addition of the same two whole numbers together will always produce the same result. Combined with our knowledge that a thing is always what it is, we can safely conclude that addition can be used to arrive at statements of mathematical truth. For this reason, number three, mathematics. Beginning with simple addition and moving from there to subtraction, we can firmly state with 100% certainty that mathematics is a viable means of reaching truth. Therefore, numbers contain truth content. And since truth is that which conforms to reality, this means that numbers must be in some sense real. From this knowledge, we can infer all other mathematical truths, including multiplication, division, fractions, percentages, and so on. Now, because numbers exist, we can use them to begin determining the size, scope, and dimensions of the world around us. Thus, we arrive at measurement and the fourth method of proof. Four, science. Using a combination of induction and mathematics, we can begin to measure various things, whether through feet, yards, meters, kilometers, light years, centimeters, years, days, minutes, seconds, and so on. At its most basic level, science is a study of our existence through observation and measurement. However, there's something else that mathematical percentages give us. Percentages can give us a good idea of how much evidence supports one conclusion versus how much supports the opposite of that conclusion. While this is not certain knowledge, it can help us to gauge how much reason we have to believe one uncertain claim over another. This means that we have what we've been looking for, data that makes a conclusion more likely than it would have been without it, and that means we can establish a new rule for telling uncertain truth from falsehood. An uncertain truth is one which is backed up by the balance of all available, relevant evidence. From this, a whole world of facts opens up to us because 5. Perception 
we clearly have more evidence that our senses provide us with true information than we do that our sense information is false. Therefore, our fifth form of evidence is established, things that we can perceive and experience for ourselves. Combining this with science leads to fields like geology, biology, chemistry, and astronomy, all of which require us to be able to justify observation as a type of evidence. Now that we've established a full basis for knowledge and several methods for obtaining it, there's one more thing to go over. Next time, what is the key error of undercutting the basis for evidence? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.